Hi everyone, and welcome to the October release countdown day 5. It's Carolyn here, and I'm super excited to share a couple of the new products that will be released this month. The first product I'm sharing is called the Trifold Slider Dynamics, which I'm kind of partial to as I had a small part in developing this product. Now, you may recall that I made a few projects in the past that featured this peekaboo technique that I manually created using acetate. The Flamingo card was one of those projects. Well, thanks to the new trifold slider dynamics, all of the guesswork is taken out of the equation in creating this peekaboo mechanism. The trifold slider dies make adding this interactive mechanism to your cards precise and easy. The dies are designed for a typical A2 card base and can be used in the horizontal or vertical formats. My project today will also feature the new Happy Llama Day stamp set, as well as the new Snowfall stencil. I'll also be using some Limelight, Poppy, and Smooth White cardstock, as well as some acetate for my mechanism. To demonstrate how the dies work, I've die cut them out of colored acetate, as it's much easier to see in the camera, and will hopefully help you understand the science behind the mechanism. I'll share many helpful tips and tricks along the way, which can all be found in the Tips and Tricks PDF that's linked below in the video information. I'm starting off with a 4 and a quarter inch by 11 inch card base, and I'm using my score buddy to score the base at 2 and 3 quarter inches. I'll flip the base to the other side and score again at 2 and 3 quarter inches. I'll fold the flaps on the scored lines and perfect the creases with my Teflon bone folder. This gives me a trifold or gatefold card base. Next, I've die cut the larger of the two trifold slider dies from some blue and yellow acetate to help you see what I'm doing in the camera. Here, I'm folding each of the tabs of the die cuts on the provided score lines. These are the tabs that will be adhered to the card base. Then, I'll adhere some half-inch double-sided tape to each of the four tabs. I've tried a few methods of attaching the mechanism to the card base, and I found that the score tape works the best. But if you don't have score tape, you can also use your favorite quick-drying liquid adhesive, like glossy accents or diamond glaze. Here's a tip that will help with aligning the trifold die cuts on your card base. I use an A2 sized acetate grid as a guide to help me make sure that the die cuts are precisely aligned horizontally. If you don't have an acetate grid like this, you could also use some lined notebook paper or even a piece of your smart grid pad that's cut down to A2 size for placement. You can see that I interlock the two die cuts by sliding one of the long tabs through the center opening of the other die cut so that the cuts are positioned with the tabs opposite of each other. Also, the blue die cut sits a quarter inch above the yellow die cut and is perfectly parallel to the yellow die cut. This parallel placement is critical to the mechanism working properly. Also, the die cut should be positioned with the folded tabs facing the flaps of the card base and should be placed just a hair above the crease or gutter of each fold. I've used my tweezers to remove the release paper from the double-sided tape on the yellow tabs, and once I have it in position, I've folded the flap of the card base towards the sticky tabs to adhere them. And then I can repeat this process with the blue tabs. I apologize for the fact that I inadvertently did some of this out of frame of the camera. I was so intent on making sure that I positioned the die cuts properly, I slid a bit too far out of the camera's view. But I'm doing the exact same things with the blue die cut as I did with the yellow. I make sure that the blue die cut is parallel to the yellow die cut, remove the release paper from the double-sided tape, and once in position, push the flap of the base towards the sticky tabs. And I'd like to shout from the rooftops that the A2 acetate grid was a huge help in making sure that those die cuts were aligned properly. Now that the mechanism is attached to the card base, I've trimmed an interior aperture panel that measures four and a quarter inches high by four and three quarter inches wide. It's important to leave a gap on the left and right sides of the panel to give the trifold mechanism room to move. All of the measurements for both the vertical and horizontal card base and the coordinating interior panels are included in the Tips and Tricks PDF link below. I temporarily place that interior panel behind the mechanism to give me an idea of where I want my movable characters to be positioned. I stamped, colored, and die cut two of the llamas from the Happy Llama Day stamp set, and I'm positioning them onto the trifold die cuts. Once I have them where I want them, I remove the liner paper from some bits of 3D foam squares that I placed at the ends of each of the tabs. And in case you missed it, here's a screenshot of where I placed the bits of thin 3D foam squares onto the slider mechanism. You can see that the bits are very small so as not to interfere with the movement of the mechanism. And now I can adhere the second llama. I also wanted to point out that the front facing llama is controlled by the yellow tab and the right facing llama is controlled by the blue tab. 
You'll see how it all works as we move along in the video. Once the llamas are in place, I can remove the interior aperture panel and adhere it to the inside of the card base with a double layer of foam squares. Now here's where you can use a bit of your own decision making skills. Generally, I use two layers of foam squares for the interior panel in order to give the characters and the mechanism room to move. But I can say that I've also used one layer of foam squares to cut down on the bulk, and it worked just fine. You'll have to do a bit of trial and error to see what works best for you. You'll also need to make sure that you're not placing any adhesive in areas that will impede the mechanism and your characters from moving properly. Here I used larger foam squares at the top and smaller ones at the bottom, since my mechanism is so close to the bottom of the card base. I'm centering the aperture panel onto the card base, leaving the gaps on the right and left sides, and aligning the top and bottom of the panel with the card base. And you can see that once everything is in place, the card folds in perfectly, and the characters slide towards the center of the aperture when you open the flaps. It makes me giggle every time I get one of these babies to work. So now let's try it again this time using the vertical trifold card base instead of the horizontal. I trimmed a 5.5 inch by 8.5 inch card base from Limelight cardstock, scored it on both sides at 2 and an eighth inches, folded the flaps on the scored lines, and perfected the creases with my Teflon bone folder. I die cut the smaller of the two trifold slider dies twice from some clear acetate, and I'm adding some half inch double sided tape to the tabs. And again, all of the measurements for both the horizontal and vertical trifold card bases are included in the tips and tricks PDF linked below. Once all of the double-sided tape is adhered, I fold down the tabs on the provided score lines and place my A2 acetate grid sheet onto the card base to help me align the tabs. I slide one end of one of the tabs through the interior slot of the other tab and position the die cuts so that the tabs are opposite of each other. I've trimmed an aperture interior panel that measures three and a half inches wide by five and a half inches high and I die cut an aperture using the square peekaboo window dynamics. I've slid this behind the mechanism to help me align everything before I adhere it. Off camera, I die cut some snow drifts from smooth white cardstock and applied a thin layer of snowflake paste to the aperture panel using the new snowfall stencil. I adhered the pieces together with thin 3D foam squares to cut down on the bulk. And once I have everything positioned just where I want it, I use my tweezers to remove the release paper from the double-sided tape and adhere the tabs to the right flap of the card base. And once again, that A2 acetate grid sheet is a lifesaver as it really helps me make sure those tabs are aligned properly. Now that the left tabs are adhered into position, I can remove the interior panel and movable characters to position and adhere the right tabs. Same process, position them, peel away the liner paper with my tweezers, and fold the flap of the card base towards the sticky tabs. I promise that this becomes much easier with each time that you do it. I slid that interior panel back behind the mechanism to help me decide where I want my llamas to be adhered to the tabs. And again, the character on the right is controlled by the left tab, and the character on the left is controlled by the right tab. Now that I have the llamas in position, I can remove the liner paper from the bits of foam square that I adhere to the end of the left tab with my tweezers, and then I can adhere the right llama to it. I do the same thing with the left llama. Peel away the liner paper from the bits of foam square at the end of the right tab with my tweezers and adhere the left llama to the tabs. See how easy it is? Now I can adhere the interior aperture panel to the card base with foam squares. My video shows that I used two layers of foam squares, but I ultimately disassembled it and used only one layer of foam squares in order to cut down on the bulk, and it worked just fine. However, when I went to close the card, Something was getting in the way of the card closing properly. I realized that the left llama's booty was a little too big. No problem. Since the majority of the llama is hidden behind the interior panel, it's no big deal to use my detail scissors to cut off the portion of the left llama that was getting in the way. Problem solved. And now I can reattach the interior panel to the inside of the card base, making sure to leave gaps on the left and right sides, and aligning the top and bottom of the panel with the top and bottom edges of the card base. And it works perfectly. And now we can finish our card. I created most of the front of my card off camera so as to focus on the trifold slider mechanism. All of the products that I used are listed and linked below in the video description. I'm adhering the image panel to the front of the card base using large thin 3D foam squares, and you'll notice that I only adhere it to the left flap. 
This will help disguise the gatefold just in case there's a bit of a gap between the two flaps. Off camera, I stamped the Happy Llama Days sentiment onto some poppy cardstock with Sweet Tooth Pigment ink, heat embossed it with white embossing powder, and die cut it using the stitch sentiment strips. I'm adhering it to the image panel using thin 3D foam squares. The interior sentiment was stamped, after a bit of stamp surgery on one of the stamps from the whole herd stamp set, just as I did the front sentiment, but I die cut it using the essential fishtail sentiment strips instead. And there you have it. Creating these interactive cards is the highlight of what I get to do every day, and I'm so excited that the new trifold slider dies have made this mechanism absolutely foolproof. Obviously, there's a human error factor in every interactive card, but the design of these new dies really makes these cards super easy to create. I so hope you enjoyed watching my video today and that you'll be trying this out for yourself. Be sure and check out the other videos on the MFT YouTube channel for more great content. And until next time, have an awesome day.